the Derry Looney Drumlin in Silverstrand, County Galway, Ireland. As you will learn later, this mound of sediment has a complex depositional history and is a remnant of times when the environment was much more harsh, even hostile. A time when the land was roamed by glaciers some thousands of years ago. Glaciations have occurred periodically and commonly throughout Earth's history. The last glacial period in Ireland began roughly 100,000 years ago with the advance of what is now known as the Midlandian glaciation. The ice sheet advanced and retreated in cycles, in part mediated by Heinrich events of which there have been six since the onset of the Midlandian. Each advance reworked or destroyed evidence of the previous retreat, making dating internal cycles in the glaciation difficult. The Midlandian glaciation reached its peak 27,000 to 21,000 years ago, coinciding with Heinrich Event 2. The ice sheet then retreated, though some southern parts of the country remained glaciated. The ice sheet advanced again 15 to 14,000 years ago, coinciding with Heinrich Event 1. The subsequent final glacial retreat left the country deglaciated by 14,000 years ago. How do glaciations occur, and why? Major global glaciations are a common phenomenon throughout Earth's history. They are known to occur in the past as super cycles, where stadial is replaced by milder interstadial. The cool ice house conditions alternate with the warmer greenhouse periods. Major external drivers that might initiate such dramatic climate changes are the Milankovitch cycles. Eccentricity, when Earth and its orbit is furthest away from the Sun. Obliquity, when the Earth's spin axis inclination changes from 22 to 24.5 degrees. End axial precession, when variations in spin axis orientation occur. The regulation of regional temperature and heat distribution in the northern hemisphere is mainly carried out by the thermohaline circulation. The so-called conveyor belt brings latent heat to higher latitudes via warm currents. These then cool and sink, drawing more warm water from the south. A greater flux of heat to the poles accelerates ice melting. Increased freshwater input may disrupt thermohaline circulation, leading to prolonged periods of cooling. This in turn may lead to growth of ice in polar regions, increasing the albedo and establishing a positive feedback loop. Heinrich events reflect the spurt in ice growth and calving of icebergs at ice sheet margins during a temporary shutdown of the thermohaline circulation. They are followed by warmer periods, a kickstart of the conveyor belt. The waxing and waning of glaciations leave a prominent signature on the land that sometimes be f can be found preserved as one of the following glacial morphologies. Glaciers create many different morphology features on a landscape. These include drumlins, eskers, moraines, canes and kettles. Here is a map showing the distribution of drumlins in blue and eskers in red in Ireland. The distribution can help indicate past glacial advances and re-advances. Drumlin mounds have a teardrop shape, which may help to delineate ice flow direction. Lodgement tails and clasts can take on a particular flat iron shape. Eskers are deposits of intraglacial streams or channels. They consist of ridges of glacial fluoro sediment, well-sorted gravel with little or no clay. To examine the morphology of the drumlin, we will begin with the muds that occur mainly along the base of the cliff and reoccur higher up on the face. These are tidal rhythmites and are indicative of a deep, low-energy environment. The alternating light and dark bands record cycles of glacial melt. Light bands are indicative of warmer periods when there was much glacial melt. Dark bands occur in periods of little or no melt when organic matter was able to form dark muds. Dropstones are a common feature in this mud, but unusually seem to deform the sediment above them rather than below. This is likely due to the passage of an overriding glacial advance that disturbed large volumes of mud to the extent that they were displaced and re-emplaced upside down. Soft sediment deformation is also clearly visible in the mud in the form of small-scale folding and faulting. Due to the presence of an echinoderm spine, this paleoenvironment has been interpreted as deep and marine that became shallower when sea level fell as more water was locked up in ice sheets and was then overridden by a glacier. Sea level was rapidly dropping due to water being locked up on land as ice. Distal plumes of suspended fine sediment were gradually replaced by coarser sediment. Prograding of fasces occurred. 
jets of meltwater in sized channels in the mud, filling them with well-sorted rounded pebbles, gravel. Further inland, glaciers might have been advancing in surges that produced higher than normal meltwater fluxes. The gravelly beds exhibit cross stratification, evidence for unidirectional highly competent flow and rapid deposition. Sharp contact separates the well-sorted gravels from the overlying slump diamonds. The massive diamond beds were deposited by gravity-driven debris flows. Poor sorting of the sediment reflects little time spent in transport. Mostly limestone and granite class range in size from pebbles to boulders. This reflects the competence of the dense mud flow. Debris flows were instantaneous events of saturated sediment collapse down a slope. The well-sorted sand layers within the diamonds might reflect cyclic variations in sediment flux from stratified plumes. They might also be a result of sediment reworking by tidal currents as some exhibit cross-lamination. Sea level continued to drop along an isostatically depressed shoreline. The fourth facies represented consists of glacial diamond, possibly till. The facies is continuous and ranges from 0.3 to 2 meters in thickness. The facies is massive, mostly containing mud, with a wide range of cobbles and pebbles, as well as containing megaclusters of glacially faceted boulders. These megaclusters are typical of deposition from debris-rich basal ice. The fabric of the uppermost facies can be seen in this boulder here, contained within the uppermost layer. Furthermore, the contact with lower facies is erosional. This suggests that the death is deposited directly by basal ice to ice processes during erosion and streamlining of the sediment pile. Due to sea level rise, the drumlins are being eroded through wave action. Erosion creates joints that are visible on the drumlin wall. Parallel joints, as seen here, will eventually fail and part of the drumlin cliff face will collapse. The drumlins in Galway Bay are receding as much as a metre a year. This can be seen in the failing of the fence on top of the drumlin. Thank you.